This video is about the 7th Marcus of Londonderry, Charles V. and Tempest Stewart, the eldest son of the 6th Marcus of Londonderry and his wife Lady Teresa. Born on the 13th of May 1878, he was given the courtesy title Lord Stewart. He was educated at Eton College and at the Royal Military College Sandhurst. His future wife, Edith Helen Chaplin, eldest daughter of the first Viscount Chaplin and granddaughter of the third Duke of Sutherland, is pictured here with her brother Eric. Etiquette dictated she was to stand one step down from her brother so that she would not appear taller than him. On the 20th of November 1899, Lord Stuart married Lady Edith Chaplin. They had five children, one son and four daughters. Their son Edward Charles Robert Vane Tempest Stuart became the 8th Marcus of Londonderry. Lord Stuart during the first weeks of the First World War travelled to northern France as a captain reaching Paris on the 29th of August 1914. He was appointed aide-de-camp to General William Pulteney. During the course of the war he was promoted to the rank of major and when he took command of the Royal Horse Guards he held the brevet rank of Lieutenant Colonel. He had witnessed firsthand the horrors of the First World War including fighting at the Battle of the Somme. At home, Lady Londonderry organised women into the Women's Auxiliary to help with the war effort. In addition to his military service, Lord Stuart was encouraged by his father to pursue a political career. He aspired to follow in the footsteps of his great ancestor, Lord Castlereagh, the second Marcus of Londonderry. His portrait here on the left alongside the portrait of Lord Castlereagh are on display at Mount Stuart. He changed his courtesy title Lord Stuart in 1884 to Viscount Castlereagh which he used until uh, 1915 when he became the seventh Marcus of Londonderry after the death of his father. He was MP for Maidstone from 1906, giving up his seat in 1915 to enter the House of Lords. After partition in Ireland in 1921, Lord Londonderry, pictured here second from the left, was invited by the first Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, Sir James Craig, to take up the post of First Minister of Education in the Northern Ireland Government. He wanted all children to be educated together in integrated schools, but was unable to introduce the policy due to objections from the Roman Catholic Church and some Protestants. Lady Londonderry and her youngest daughter Lady Mary took up flying and gained their pilot's licenses. Lord Londonderry became interested in flying himself and gained his own pilot's license. He was a frequent flyer from Newton Arts to London. Initially, Lord Londonderry used a landing strip on his estate at Mount Stewart. He later developed part of his lands near Uton Ards for an airfield. More planes started to use the airfield at Uton Ards with some commercial flights connecting Northern Ireland with the mainland Britain. A reception building was erected and air traffic control set up the airport was officially opened on the 31st of August 1934 by the Governor of Northern Ireland, the Duke of Abercorn. 
This is a Hillman's Airways plane delivering mailbags from mainland Britain. This became a regular flight to ensure that mail ar arrived in good time from the mainland. Silver City Airways commenced flights from Newton Arch to Scotland. Their planes were capable of taking three cars and their passengers on the flight. Lord Londonderry commenced his own commercial flights from Newton Arch to England using the Miles M57 Aerovan, a forerunner to the short spilt Skyvan aeroplane. Lord Londonderry is pictured here with his cousin Sir Winston Churchill, who he greatly disagreed with in the lead up to the Second World War. Lord Londonderry had been appointed Secretary of State for Air on the 5th of November 1931 in the coalition government led by Ramsay MacDonald. He held the post until the 7th of June 1935. During his tenure as Secretary of State for Air, he had been involved in the development of the RAF and planes such as the Spitfire and the Hurricane. However, Lord Londonderry was not keen on going to war for a second time and took a more conciliatory approach to the threat from Germany than that of his cousin Winston Churchill. In an effort to persuade people of his views, he wrote two books on the subject. The German ambassador Jehoiakim Rimmentrop regularly met with the Lord Londonderry and was a frequent guest to his estates in Durham. The German ambassador Ribbentrop was also invited by Lord Londonderry to visit his estate at Mount Stewart. The ambassador's plane is seen here landing at Newton Arts Airport. Lord Londonderry was invited by Ribbentrop to Berlin on six occasions and he met with Adolf Hitler on several of those occasions. He was considered by the Germans to be an important member of the British government, especially in his position as Secretary of State for Air. Lord Londonderry is on the left of the picture and Ribbentrop is on the right. In this picture, Lord Londonderry is inspecting a plane in France. After he was replaced as Secretary of State for Air in June 1935, he was made leader of the House of Lords at Westminster and Lord Privy Seal. Lady Edith, the wife of the seventh Marcus, was considered to be one of Britain's greatest hostesses, entertaining both royalty, members of high society and foreign dignities. She is pictured here on the left wearing the Londonderry tiara. During the Second World War, Lady Londonderry continued with her work with the Women's Auxiliary in support of the war effort. When Lady Londonderry first arrived at Mount Stewart in the early 1920s, she described the house as being in a rundown state and said it was cold and dark. With her husband having to spend more time in Ireland due to his involvement with the Northern Ireland government, she commenced refurbishing and decorating the house. The crowning glory of her refurbishment was the design and creation of the formal gardens around the house. Many of the trees and plants were brought from all over the world and the gardens are considered today to be one of the finest gardens in Britain. As well as designing the formal gardens, Lady Edith planted many of the trees and plants herself. She left the gardens to the National Trust before she died. The 7th Marcus of Londonderry died on the 10th of February 1949 and was buried at Mount Stewart in the new family burial ground which they called Tir Nano, meaning the land of youth. 
Liddy just died on the 23rd of April 1959 and was buried alongside her husband, the 7th Marcus of Londonderry, in the family burial ground at Mount Stewart. Thank you.